Good day, this is JNN Weekday News. I'm Unique Francis. Here now are the top stories. Six men who were arrested on a Tuesday for allegedly planning attacks on JUTC buses were brought before the court yesterday on various traffic charges. Four of them who are bus operators were taken before the traffic court after it was discovered that they had several outstanding tickets for traffic violations. They were later offered bail. Two others were charged with being in possession of offensive weapons and were offered bail to appear in court later this week. The men were nabbed on a Tuesday following a series of attacks on JUTC buses in the Washington Boulevard and Doheny Park areas in St. Andrew. The men, were, the men who were traveling in a minibus were intercepted by a police team monitoring the affected routes. The cops say they discovered gasoline and other items used to block roads in the men's possession. Commissioner of Police Owen Ellington has labeled convicted entertainer Vibes Cartel as a gang leader whose gang was responsible for more than 100 murders. The commissioner's statement comes weeks after the entertainer and three others were sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Clive Lizard Williams. Commissioner Ellington said the police have been tracking cartel's activities for some time, but the entertainer was protected because of his popularity. Meanwhile, Commissioner Ellington has revealed that his office initiated investigations into the allegations of extrajudicial killings by some members of the police force in Clarendon. The commissioner highlighted that his office began the probe after its own information revealed that there were activities by some members of the force that needed further investigation. Commissioner Ellington stated in an interview that once the probe was at a certain stage, it was then handed over to, the, to Indicom. So far, eight policemen have been charged by Indicom in relation to killings in the Area 3 Police Division. They have all been taken to court where they pleaded not guilty. The local government minister Noel R. Scott has asserted that a contract has been signed with a company to take tires from the Riverton City landfill for recycling. Last month, a fire broke out in an area of the landfill known as the tire cell, causing thick smoke to flood sections of the corporate area and St. Catherine. Mr. R. Scott said there will be more monitoring of the landfill and that the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPM, has acquired two pumps to help pump water to the landfill if there is another fire. In sports, Jamaican sprinter Safa Powell was given an 18-month suspension for the use of the banned substance oxylofrin. He will be eligible to resume competition in December 2014. Powell, along with teammate and training partner Sharon Simpson, tested positive for the drug at the Jamaica National Trials in June 2013. The pair com contended that the drug was contained in a supplement given to them by trainer Chris Zureb. Simpson also received an 18-month ban. Meanwhile, member of the Jamaica Anti-Doping Commission, JADCO Disciplinary Committee, which handed down the ban, Lennox Gale, had this to say. We, the panel, we considered all the evidence and we arrived at a unanimous decision. Okay, in terms of the timeline, it's 18 months. When does it start? When does it end? It begins on the 21st of June 2013 and it will end on the 20th of December 2014. Powell's lawyer responded with this statement. We are disappointed that having had two months to review the matter and provide with all evidence we have no written reasons and the sanction would imply that the athlete is being held at a certain standard well it would have, it would have been I think appropriate if the panel had applied the same standard to themselves and provided us with written reasons the second thing is that we do not agree with the award um, just like in the Sharon matter, we are taking it to the next level. Thank you. Okay. okay. Right. And those were the headlines for this or You can watch our live stream at jamaicanewsnetwork.com. I'm Unique Francis and this is JNN News Worth Watching.